flexibility and versatility in all situations are at the forefront of SpaceX's development strategy in the space industry. It's clear that the company is not only applying these principles to its rockets, but also to the ground infrastructure it's building, such as Launchpad B. Right now, at the new Launchpad, SpaceX and Elon are implementing an unprecedented improvement, the dual flame bucket. Let's find out more on today's episode of Alpha Tech. And thanks for being here. The new construction project SpaceX is building next to the Launchpad A is drawing special attention from lots of folks. And that's understandable as it is not only a Launchpad designed and upgraded in a completely different way from previous pads, but also stands out compared to all other rocket launch pads on the planet. Plans for this second launch site at Starbase include two main components, the Mechazilla Tower and then a fixed flame trench. While Mechazilla Tower seems to have completed its outer structure, the ground infrastructure, especially the flame trench, has only recently started showing progress. SpaceX's engineering teams are using specialized machinery to dig the trench. This process isn't just about moving soil. They are carefully placing rebar to reinforce the concrete structure, ensuring the launch pad can withstand multiple launches. However, a major challenge at Starbase is the groundwater level, which is very close to sea level. This not only complicates the excavation process, but also impacts the overall stability of the structure. Engineers have to implement additional technical solutions to prevent the water from seeping in and weakening the structure. Hopefully, it hits its final depth in the next couple of weeks, at which point we'll have a better understanding of this remarkable piece of SpaceX's infrastructure. Really looking forward to that. We also have some credible predictions regarding this construction based on new components getting to Sanchez. These parts resemble those seen supporting Massey's flame deflector. The talented Chrome Kiwi team developed this prediction with an impressive 3D model they shared on X, showing the complexity and engineering marvel behind SpaceX's flame trench, which isn't as simple as we might have thought. Instead, it's got a dual flame bucket design. A big thanks to them for their dedication and artistry in creating these visuals. Be sure to give them a follow on X to support them. With Chrome Kiwi 3D's rendering, we can see the flame trench positioned strategically beneath the test pad. In the center is an inverted V-shaped structure covered with a high temperature resistant material. While we don't exactly know what this material is, based on SpaceX's practices, it might be steel plates overlaid on a thick heat resistant concrete base. Once assembled, the trench will get reinforced with fire shields between guide rails on the left and right of the launch pad surface. Of course, the trench walls will also be armored to protect the structure from high temperatures. The fire trench protections are crucial to ensure stability and durability under extreme conditions. Additionally, it'll have a water distribution system designed to support testing, further enhancing resilience. The additional water system will reduce heat and pressure, creating a shower effect similar to what we saw with Launchpad A, ensuring the safety of both the rocket and launch infrastructure. This cool and clever design effectively withstands high temperatures from exhaust plumes, prevents backflow, and keeps surface pressure within design limits. This will help SpaceX avoid damage, an issue we saw during Flight 1 when the launch pad's integrity was not yet fully established. The particularly interesting point about the new flame trench compared to the water-cooled steel plate of launch pad A is its potential for long-term use. While the steel plate has experienced wear after multiple launches, the flame trench is better equipped to handle the rigorous operational cycles of the new orbital launch mount, OLM, ensuring enhanced durability as SpaceX preps for thousands of flights every year and solidifies its lead in commercial space travel. The dual flame bucket system has been confirmed through numerous successful tests with Starship prototypes at Massey, laying a solid foundation for upcoming launch pad B tests. As illustrated in Chrome Kiwi's images, the plan includes building an additional flame bucket opposite the OLM, positioning it centrally. When ignited, the energy gets distributed evenly, creating a visually stunning effect as dust billows outward like massive wings enveloping Starship. This improved system is crucial for future rocket testing and launches. Right now, the Massey Flame Trench is only used for static fire tests while Super Heavy is tested at the launch site. The dual flame bucket represents a big advancement in SpaceX's approach, optimizing launch operations and enhancing safety effectively by managing the immense energy output from Super Heavy, leading to faster turnaround times. At this point, we might notice a bit of a contradiction, as some people have criticized Elon for not initially building a flame trench for Pad A. One argument suggests that even if you're not a rocket scientist, it's clear that all the energy from the Raptors has to go somewhere and just raising Starship 50 feet above solid concrete is not enough. Without a large flame trench, blast deflectors, and water suppression systems, Starship would need to be elevated to a height of 200 feet above ground, and even that might not work. All the energy from the Raptor engines goes directly into the concrete below Starship, destroying it, and then, 
All that energy, along with massive chunks of concrete, would ricochet back to Starship, damaging the Raptor engines and other critical equipment. This critic even referenced Kennedy Space Center, which faces similar groundwater levels but still has flame trenches. SpaceX could potentially bring in tons of soil to create a 75-foot high mound, construct the tower on top of it, and then build the trench within the mound, so the whole structure would rest on natural ground above the ground above the water table. While this might seem logical, it's not entirely accurate. SpaceX has some pretty good reasons for not building a flame trench initially. An intriguing engineering study on launchpad design found that simple solutions often outperform the complex ones. Specifically, when it comes to the deflectors on elevated pads, a basic flat horizontal plate is more effective than sophisticated shapes like ramps or cones. If you have high enough of a launch pad, you won't need a flame bucket, at least in terms of vehicle protection. When a rocket gets launched from height, its exhaust spreads out in all directions horizontally. This 360-degree dispersal pattern actually helps weaken the exhaust forces faster than when they're channeled through a confined trench or tube. The study's findings about flat plate deflectors were particularly counterintuitive. With a simple horizontal plate beneath a multi-engine rocket, the exhaust spreads outward in all directions. While this creates a range of upward angles, it results in minimal acoustic energy getting reflected back towards the vehicle. And that's exactly what you want in a launch system. SpaceX's decision to build an elevated ring mount over a flat pad aligns with these research findings. While many armchair critics question this, it appears to be grounded in sound engineering. The design simplicity may actually be one of its strengths. However, any launch pad design must contend with the fundamental challenges of protecting the concrete underneath from disintegration. This isn't unique to SpaceX's approach. Flame trenches, they face the same issue. In fact, flame deflectors can introduce more risks if they're not built to support the whole pressure load across an unsupported span. A failure in the underlying concrete or soil could cause the deflector to break, sending heavy steel plates flying before the concrete and soil get away. While SpaceX's implementation may be a bit flawed, the critics who point to the obvious design mistakes might be missing the larger picture. Sometimes the simplest solution, in this case an elevated mount with a flat deflector, is actually the most effective approach, provided it's properly executed. So we can see that the steel cooling plate and water deluge system have worked quite well in recent launches. This switch to a flame trench is thus a method for SpaceX to choose the best path forward. SpaceX might consider which approach to replicate to support the intense launch pace in the future. Following the success of Flight 5, we can expect Starship launches to become more frequent. SpaceX is preparing to increase launch frequency to fully realize its landing and reusability capabilities, set up refueling systems, test the Starship HLS, and much more. At Starbase, SpaceX has proposed an ambitious plan to launch and land 25 times in the near future. We might witness an increase in flight frequency, setting the stage for the first Starship mission to Mars in 24 months, a crewed mission in four years, and eventually building a base on Mars. Not only will the number of launches increase, but Starship's power will also get an upgrade. Elon recently said the new launch pad is already designed for a 10,000-ton thrust version, which is almost exactly three times more powerful than the Saturn V moon rocket. This launch pad will be able to support SpaceX's biggest rocket with 33 to 35 Raptor 3s, each with 280 tons of thrust. But this new system will come with some challenges. First, the flame trenches need to be dug deeper and wider, taking up a bit more space. And if SpaceX wants to build more systems like this down the road, expanding Starbase is going to be essential. However, this poses a challenge with government agencies and environmental concerns still getting addressed. Let's see how SpaceX deals with that. Thanks for watching the show. Take care. Stay safe and see you next time. Bye.